Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Link TV presents Mosaic World News from the Middle East. Here are today's top stories. A wounded Gaddafi is captured in CERT and dies in the custody of the revolution, leading Libya to erupt in celebration as the West hails its intervention. Mosaic World News from the Middle East begins now. The UN Secretary General said the killing of Gaddafi ushered a historic and democratic transition for Libya, calling on Libyans to unite as they face the next phase. French President Nicolas Sarkozy described the killing of Gaddafi as an imperative phase in the liberation of Libya. For her part, EU Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton said the killing of Gaddafi ended a tragic phase in the Libyan's life. Meanwhile, the African Union announced it will grant membership to the Libyan National Transitional Council, the NTC. The Islamic Cooperation Organization called for unity among Libyans and said to steer away from revenge. The organization welcomed turning the page of the former regime. U.S. President Barack Obama said difficult days lie ahead for Tripoli, indicating that his country and the United Nations will continue to support them in Libya's political process. In his first comment on the killing of Colonel Muammar al-Gaddafi, Obama called on Libyans to form a transitional government and conduct elections soon. Obama considered the killing of Gaddafi the end of a long and painful chapter and called on Libyans to build a democratic and tolerant country. The U.S. President commended what he referred to as international efforts which led to the end of Gaddafi's regime. The Libyan revolutionary seized full control of the city of Sirte, Gaddafi's last stronghold, marking the full liberation of Libya, as confirmed by the NTC. With the fall of Sirte, Colonel Gaddafi has fallen dead, amid conflicting reports about the circumstances surrounding his death. In addition, the NTC announced the death of his son, Muatassam, his defense minister, and his army's commander, Abu Bakr Yunus. Incoming reports also confirm the arrest of Gaddafi's government spokesman, Musa Ibrahim, and the pursuit of Saif al-Islam Gaddafi across the Libyan desert. The colonel who proclaimed himself as the king of African kings and the general of the Arab rulers has been killed. He was killed following 42 years of rule over Libya and nine months after the spark of the Libyan revolution. Muammar al-Gaddafi took his final breath in the Libyan city of Sirte, midway between Tripoli and Benghazi. We announced to the world the killing of Gaddafi at the hands of the revolutionaries ending a chapter of repression inflicted by Gaddafi and his regime in Libya and the world. The circumstances surrounding Gaddafi's death remain ambiguous. One thing is for sure, the colonel has been killed, as the revolutionaries have put it. The revolutionaries stormed the basement in neighborhood number two in Sirt, where the colonel and his men were hiding. The colonel was hit by several bullets and sustained serious injuries to his head. Gaddafi died as the revolutionaries were transporting him to Masrata. The incident dominated the Libyan scene. New images emerged, confirming the death of the Libyan defense minister and the commander of the armed forces, Abu Bakr Yunus. In addition, an NTC leader confirmed the death of the slain Libyan leader's son, Mu'tasim, and the arrest of Gaddafi's spokesman, Musa Ibrahim. NATO forces recount one side of the story, as they announced the shelling of a convoy loyal to Gaddafi hours before he was captured in the same area. Sirte, which was the last standing stronghold of Gaddafi, has fallen under the complete control of NTC forces. We completed a wonderful achievement, represented by the full liberation of Libyan soil. Libyans faced the challenge of building the new Libya. It's an event that the Libyan people are joyously celebrating, amid anticipation of what is coming next, following the collapse of the slain leader's regime after clinging on to power for nearly half a century.
Ibrahim Mohamed Maju, one of the brigade's fighters who found Gaddafi, said they transported Gaddafi, who was injured, on board one of their vehicles before he was taken by an ambulance, where he took his last breath. We arrested Abu Shafshufa. We found him along with some of his men hiding in an underground hole. I can't give the exact location, but the area is located near the chicken feed factory. We arrested him along with his supporters. Some of his men started shooting at us from their hole. We returned fire and we closed in on them. As soon as he came out of the hole, he said, what's that? What's going on? Then we captured him. He had a gun in his hand. He was first captured by one of our youths, a member of the Iran Brigade, and then more youths assisted. He was bleeding. We got him out along with the other prisoners. We transported him in an ambulance. First we put him in an armored car, then an ambulance came and took him. He was killed. When I saw him, he was unconscious. He was hit before we hit him. As we mentioned earlier, Abu Bakr Yunus, the defense minister in the Gaddafi government, who led the operations against the revolutionaries in Sirte, was killed in the confrontations that erupted between the revolutionaries and the Gaddafi brigades. Footage obtained by Al Jazeera shows Yunus's body. Yunus was growing a beard and wearing formal clothes. The footage shows that he was hit by gunfire between his neck and chest. The revolutionaries' sources said that Yunus's body was transported by an ambulance to the city of Misra as well. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, may God have mercy on the soul of the martyrs. Today we turn the page on 42 years and we are starting a new Libya, today on October 20th. How do you want the new Libya to look? We want a free and democratic Libya that belongs to the entire Libyan people. No to tyranny and no to the one-person rule. Yes to freedom and democracy. Libya belongs to everyone. Haj, are you from Tunisia? No, I'm from the Nafusa Mountains. I hail from the free Amazigh, the free and the free Arabs. Why are you raising Tunisia's flag? Tunisia rescued us. The spark was lit by Tunisia. The very first spark, the spark for Jerusalem. To Jerusalem, to Jerusalem. We will not forget Ahmed Yassin. We will not forget Ahmed Yassin. A joyous and jubilant atmosphere prevailed in Tripoli and Sirte immediately following the announcement of Gaddafi's killing. More details in the following report. This is how Libyans received the news of Gaddafi's death. Here in Tripoli, where they spontaneously gathered. Everyone is chanting and everyone is jubilant. Their eyes express their joy, their foreheads are shining with elation. It is astounding how crowded it is after it was nearly deserted and abandoned by everyone except fighters. <laughs> Libya is brimming with happiness. Flags are raised, people are ululating with joy, and celebratory gunshots are fired in every square.
قتل القذافي في مسقط راسه سرت قدافي was killed from wounds sustained in his birthplace of Sirte after eight months of battles that ended his rule. جاء مقتله بعد قليل من اعتقال. His killing came soon after he was captured in Sirte. This is one of the most tragic endings of the Arab Spring, which previously toppled the rulers of Egypt and Tunisia and is now warning the leaders of Yemen and Syria. Many Libyan leaders were quick to announce the news of Gaddafi's killing. The first to announce the news were members of the National Transitional Council, Abdul Majid Guka and Abdul Karim al Hajj. Among a group of fighters who gathered around pictures of Gaddafi, one fighter confirmed that Gaddafi was killed and his sons are in custody. Gaddafi's capture came soon after the city of Sirte fell into the hands of the revolutionaries, meaning resistance by any of the former regime's supporters left in the city and its surroundings was pointless. With the end of Gaddafi, the National Transitional Council is now the new authority in Libya. Libyans have long anticipated the establishment of a democratic system, which the NTC has been expected to create once Libya is liberated. Today, that became a reality. Asam Abdullah, BBC. now in the studio to discuss this week's release of IDF Staff Sergeant Shalit, as well as regional developments is Dr. Jonathan Spire of the IDC Global Research Center. Good evening, Dr. Spire. Good evening. First, let's talk about the reported death of Muammar Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. What, if any, implication will this, his death have on the region, in your view? I don't think it will have a great impact on the current processes underway in the region. First of all, this was more or less uh, inevitable and was coming. We knew that the Gaddafi regime was on its last uh, phase. It was holding out in Syria. It was clearly a done deal that the Transitional Council was going to come to power. Secondly, the Gaddafi regime in any case was to some degree or to a great degree isolated in the region. Gaddafi regime was not part of either of the two uh, leading blocs in the region, not part of the pro-US bloc, not part of the pro-Iranian bloc. So to a great extent, I think, you know, this, this regime's disappearance is important, of course, for Libya itself. But in terms of a wider impact on the region, I think it will be minimal. Let's uh, get an introspective about uh, what is going on. First, Nada Hashwi is a political uh, commentator, joins us uh, from Beirut. Nada Hashwi, well, it's uh, quite a day for Libya, and it's uh, quite startling uh, and interesting looking at the images there of Muammar Gaddafi, of what has occurred. Of course, uh, uh, the end of Muammar Gaddafi uh, signifies a beginning that, uh, to say the least, is going to be filled with lots of challenges there for uh, Libya. Why don't you first tell us your initial thoughts and reaction to what has occurred? Well, it's definitely a, a historic victory for the NTC and for the NATO as well. Uh, more so for the NATO, in my opinion, uh, strategically and oil-wise, unfortunately. But uh, for the Libyans and for Gaddafi himself, uh, this is the end of every dictator. Uh, in the world. Uh, but what I'm really a little bit sad about is um, I wish that he had said to us all of his secrets and who he had given money to uh, from uh, uh, leaders in, in the West and leaders in the Arab world. Uh, this is one thing that I had would like to see or heard uh, from him. Uh, but unfortunately, um, they killed him, and uh, and this is uh, an end to every single dictator. Like I said, uh, that should be that should happen. Well, of course, we can't forget about the fact that maybe uh, he was a dictator and he ruled for decades. And of course, what the Libyans experienced, and he was responsible for some of the deaths that occurred to the use of snipers. But of course, this eight months has uh, also been accompanied by another type of warfare, and that was the NATO air operation, which uh, was exerted on Libya, which brought about its deaths. And tell us what you think uh, about what NATO at this point, the countries involved is what I'm referring to, is thinking. Uh, obviously, they want a transition that suits the investment that they made. And I'm talking aside from uh, the oil contracts 
that I'm sure at some point uh, they're going to reap the rewards off. Well, definitely, of course, beside the oil contracts that they had uh, signed way before they started uh, uh, bombarding uh, the Gaddafi. Uh, what they want, first of all, stability in the area. They want uh, uh, oil and oil and more oil. And, of course, they want the uh, security of Israel. And they're hoping that the new regime that's going to come, it will definitely give them this kind of uh, stability in the area. And don't forget that uh, um, and NATO uh, do not do anything uh, for free. I mean, they're not uh, an NGO that would help people for nothing. They want a lot and a lot uh, from Libya. They want to, they're, they're, they're there to stay. Uh, they're not going to be leaving anytime soon. And unfortunately, I hate to say that to the Libyans, uh, don't celebrate yet because what we saw in Iraq, uh, I'm, I'm afraid that we're going to see uh, something close to it in Libya. The peculiar colonel with distinctive features, the brother leader and guide of the revolution, ruled Libya for over four decades. In the name of Libya, he travelled around the world wearing a cloak and strange attires, completely disregarding all customs and norms in his interactions with the world. He was Muammar al Qaddafi. He's Colonel Muammar al Gaddafi, the brother leader and guide of the revolution, the king of African kings, and the head of the great socialist people's Libyan Arab Jamahiriya. He had many titles, but only one ending. Gaddafi fell dead in his hometown. The man who expressed solidarity with Ben Ali during the latter's downfall sympathised with Mubarak and held the Mossad responsible for the revolution in Egypt was just another dictator who feared the loss of a throne in shambles on which he sat for more than half his life. His clinging on to the seat brought his end and he was killed by NATO's weapons. Forty-two years of tyranny, monopoly of wealth and implementation of special programs in European capitals for 42 years, Gaddafi carried his tent and travelled with it from one capital to the next, taking with him his temperament and his women bodyguards. He tore up the UN Charter in the UN's own backyard. Now the Security Council is security feudalism, political feudalism for those who have permanent seats protected by them, and they are used against us. In turn, it should not be called the Security Council, it should be called the Terror Council. In his Green Book, Gaddafi represented himself as a social and political philosopher and as being knowledgeable in medicine, art and sciences. He also compared himself to Jesus Christ and Prophet Muhammad. He said the status of European women is tragic because they have to work and he wanted to support and help them. Once he slapped a companion, another time he harassed a female diplomatic envoy, he reintroduced democracy according to his personal dictionary, and he proposed a solution to the two-state issue in the occupied territories with the term Isratine. The word democracy is made up of two syllables, democracy, 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 democracy. It means keep and shares. It is an Arabic word to stay on shares. The ruler's four-decade-long reign was filled with all kinds of corruption and human rights violations. He seized power in 1969 in a military coup against King Mohammed Idris al-Sanusi. Ever since he emerged as the leader of the revolution, Gaddafi's attires became announcements for his positions. Once he wore the picture of Omar al-Mukhtar on his chest while receiving Italians, the ones who killed him. Another time he wore the map of Africa. He was known for his anecdotes and his many bouts of madness in the councils of Arab leaders. At the Arab summit in 1988, he wore a white glove on his right hand, saying he does not shake hands that are stained with blood. At the latest Arab summit, he sat near the Saudi king puffing cigar smoke in his face. In between these two incidents, the colonel had a famous verbal exchange with the Saudi king. I told him the information I have indicates that American forces are flowing into Saudi Arabia, but how? He said, well, America is a powerful country, and if it wants to enter, we will allow it. I said, how can it enter a sovereign state? The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is not a slave to colonialism like you and others. Who brought you to power? You? Who brought you? Tell me. 
قضى القذافي سنوات حكمه في مواجهات سياسية قذافي spent the years of his rule in political confrontations with the West. He turned into the enemy of the Americans and Europeans and was accused of carrying out two attacks. The first targeted an American airplane that crashed in Lockerbie of Scotland in 1988. The second targeted a French flight over Niger in 1989. But at the beginning of the new millennium, his decades of fighting against the West ended as he welcomed Westerners in Libya and visited them in their capitals. In 2003, he suddenly announced he was giving up a secret nuclear weapons program and admitted responsibility for the Lockerbie incident and the French airplane. He also financially compensated the victims' families. Gaddafi, who accused the Libyan mobilization of receiving orders from al-Qaeda, described the revolutionaries as rats and vowed to capture them zenga zenga or alley by alley, lost the final battle in his hometown and main stronghold, and the king of kings fell. Libya has turned the final page of its green book in hopes that it is not opening the door to the era of the red book. Because I was talking to the young men at Green Square and I want to stay the night with them, but then it started raining. I want to show them that I'm in Tripoli, not in Venezuela. Don't believe the channels belonging to stray dogs. Peace. In Yemen, clashes between regime forces and tribesmen loyal to the revolutionaries have broken out in the capital, Sana'a. This is tens of thousands have protested against the government in several cities. Heavy gunfire and explosions are being heard in several districts. No casualties have been reported. In the past three days alone, dozens of people have been killed in similar clashes. Also, tens of thousands of protesters have held a huge march calling on the UN to take strong action against embattled ruler Ali Abd al Saleh. Meanwhile, in the southern city of Taiz, regime forces have attacked tens of thousands of anti-regime protesters. Ten people have so far been injured, including a young girl. The protesters were shouting slogans against the ruling regime and calling for the UN to intervene and stop what they called the ongoing massacre in Yemen. Yemen has been witnessing a popular revolution since the beginning of this year. The regime in Manama has delayed the release of a report into the violent crackdown on anti-regime protesters as it sentences more demonstrators to jail. The report will be released almost a month later than its October 30th deadline. Bahraini regime-owned media says that the Bahrain Independent Commission of Inquiry requested the extension to evaluate thousands of complaints against the ruling Al Khalifa family. The probe is commissioned to investigate the regime's misconduct. It is composed of five lawyers, including foreign nationals. This, as a military court in Manama, has sentenced 20 people to six months of jail time for protesting against the ruling family. Reports say the demonstrators were tortured by forces loyal to the Al Khalifa ruling family. Britain founded the regime in 1820 after signing a treaty with the family, giving it the title Rulers of Bahrain. In the last 24 hours, government forces conducted wide-scale arrest campaigns in a number of governorates. The Babylon province police chief announced that 306 people were arrested, claiming they are wanted suspects. This comes as 80 people were arrested in Salah Abdin province. Police forces in Diyala province also arrested 12 people. Government forces are still launching wide-scale arrest campaigns against Iraqis without arrest warrants or giving any reasons for the arrests. Today, the Babylon province police chief announced that police forces, in cooperation with government intelligence institutions in the province, carried out a series of raids throughout Babylon in the last 24 hours and arrested 306 people under the pretext that they are wanted suspects. This comes as a police source in Saladin province reported that joint forces arrested 80 people during a security operation north of Tikrit city, claiming they've been accused of terrorism. The source said the joint security and army forces carried out raids and inspection campaigns in various areas of the Sharkat district and consequently arrested 80 people. The source claimed that the operations were carried out based on accurate intelligence information.
وفي السياق نفسه ألقت قوات الشرطة بمحافظة ديال القبض على 12 شخصاً في عملية مناطق بالمحافظة وتأتي هذه الحملة الواسعة بينما تعج السجور الاتهامات عليهم بشكل قانوني كما أن ذوي المعتقلين يجهلون على الأغلب أماكن الاعتقال ومرجعين احتشد مئات المواطنين في ساحة التحرير وسط hundreds of citizens gathered in Tahrir Square in central Baghdad to protest the deteriorating security situation and condemning the government for its lack of legitimacy. They are also protesting against keeping occupation forces in the country for so-called training. Since February 25, 2011, Iraq has been witnessing weekly protests across the country demanding reform and the elimination of rampant corruption in the country. Meanwhile, protesters in all provinces have escalated their calls for demonstrations until their demands are fully met. The views expressed on Mosaic are from contributing broadcasters, not Link TV or its sponsors. The production of Mosaic is made possible by grants from the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, the Wincote Foundation, the Firedall Foundation, and by support of viewers like you. Thank you. Watch Mosaic World News online. Stay up to date with breaking news, read our blog, get transcripts of past shows, and more at linktv.org slash mosaic. This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.